Good evening folks, uh, first of all, uh, hopefully this video should be a bit more in focus. Uh, I've replaced the uh, strip lighting in the workshop with uh, 4000K, uh, it's a cool white um, lighting, so I've done some test videos and it does seem to keep the video a bit sharper, so hopefully that'll be reflected in the quality of this image that you're seeing tonight. Um, so what I'm going to show you tonight is uh, something um, from days gone by, I'm taking you back to the time before... Uh, we had nice flat screen LED and LCD TVs. Um, back in the day, we used to have massive, huge uh, TVs that, you know, was almost a two-man lift. Some of them, they were so heavy um, because of the technology inside. And the technology was the cathode ray tube. So I thought I would uh, show you one. And uh, in, this, uh, in this particular unit, this is a small cathode ray tube that's in it, as you can see. Um, and yeah, I thought we'd, we'd uh, talk through how it works and then tear down this uh, small portable uh, unit uh, which um, in true form to my other sort of car boot videos I got for 50 pence. <laughs> um, this uh, was purchased from a, one of the house clearance guys at the car boot sale. You know, they just have loads of old cardboard boxes and my big sign saying everything 50 pence and yeah so i picked this up of course this is completely useless in the uk now because we are a purely digital country now we don't have any analog uh, transmissions other than um you know when it comes to radio uh, we do have uh, digital audio broadcast or dab radio uh, but that uh, Predominantly, it's the the FM and, and sometimes medium wave and long wave bands that we use over here, as in many countries. But um, yeah, I digress. We're going to be looking at this uh, cathode ray uh, TV. Uh, we'll have a quick look around the unit. Um, we can see in the front we've got this has, does have an FM radio uh, tuner in it as well, uh, and sorry AM as well. Um, oops got a volume control there now what i've got as you can see here just to show you that actual image um, i'm just using a small uh, black and white um cctv monitor there we go some free advertising for uh cpc again <laughs> yeah so this has got a composite input um so I just used it to test it and it obviously works quite well. Um, you can see a flickering on there and that's just purely the scan rate of this monitor being picked up by the camera. Um, so yeah, talked about the front controls. On the side we've got our FM and AM uh, tuner. And missing on this side uh, is a knob for the, the UHF, um, you know, the old analogue TV tuning. So that was useless anyway. Uh, on the bottom, we've got um, provision for uh, c size batteries, so it takes uh, 10 uh, 1.5 volt uh, batteries. Um, the cover was missing when I got it, so yeah, so I'm just powering it with a, a 12 volt um, <coughs> uh, DC adapter. Uh, we've got an external antenna for TV and uh, radio and earphone socket, 12 volt in, and clearly composite. Uh, video and uh, mono audio and we've got a brightness contract and vertical uh, sorry brightness contrast and vertical hold uh, adjustment knobs oops let's hit the spring there and i'll just show you those working um clearly um if i just come back up again so we'll get something to reference to it um yeah we can adjust the as you see there the contrast and then we've got the brightness on the end which clearly does exactly what it says in tin and in some TVs like this one we had a vertical hold so if your picture was doing that you could adjust it until you got the you know the, the picture held in the right uh, you know so it was a static image so I think uh, what we'll do is tear it down now And what I'll do is I'll I'll be just powering uh, that with the uh, bench lighting, so I'll just plug that back in. <clears throat> and then we'll we'll crack on and tear it apart. Okay, dokes. Right. So let's grab a screwdriver. Uh, not a lot to it, I don't think. 
there's only uh, two screws actually visible on this on the bottom of it so we'll take these out and have a look inside so I don't know how easy this will be to, to take apart but um ah, I've got a couple in there Yeah, it was quite um, slim pickings at the car boot sale yesterday uh, as a bank holiday here in the UK on, uh, well, yesterday, Monday. Uh, so I went to one of the local car boots just to have a, a dig around, but yeah, not, not a lot doing really. Right, that seems to have released it, he says. I can just see a couple of clips here. Alright, so that came apart fairly easily. So what I'll do is I'll just uh I'll just trim these uh, wires off. Okay, so inside uh, we'll just get the blue zero antenna connection uh, to the telescopic antenna that's on the top of the unit and obviously that's just a speaker and uh the black and red, unsurprisingly, is uh, the 12 volt uh, power coming from the batteries. <coughs> right, so um, inside here, uh, everything seems to be on one board, and I will uh, take care. I imagine there is a fairly large capacitor somewhere. Uh, it doesn't appear to be. I'm not going to take any any chances. So what I'll do is I'll take the um, um I think what we'll do is we'll take the uh, tube retainer out. So this is just a steel, quite heavy gauge uh, steel wire, uh, which uh, holds the tube in, and the tube is glass. Um, and it's under quite a high vacuum as well. So once we've got it out, we'll have a look at it and we'll talk you through how it works. And it will be in sort of layman's terms, so I think this has been dropped before as well because I can see that one of the uh in fact the whole the whole thing isn't uh sorry, the whole uh, tubes sort of floating about after I've taken those uh couple of screws out. Um, that looks to be glued quite securely in. Try not to get zapped here. There we go. Right, that was uh, a bit hard work getting that out. So, this is our cathode ray tube here. We can see this is specially designed for Jin Lipu, whoever they are. And um, yeah, this is a cathode ray tube, and this is the old school uh, display of its time. And um, the way essentially works is, and I said, as I said, this will be in sort of layman's terms, is um, we've got what we call an electron gun at the side, um, and what that does is 
unsurprisingly, is fires, like a gun does, uh, a beam of electrons, okay? And um, you can see these coils here around the, the back of the unit here. What that does is when the, um, the, the video image is processed and then basically put into the, the electron gun and the, and, the, and the coils, essentially. So the image comes in, obviously, in a, essentially like a code, if you like, and the electron uh, gun is firing this beam of electrons. And what happens is these coils um, basically control the direction of the electron beam. <clears throat> And what it does is a, it's a raster scan, and what a raster scan is, it basically, you know, from top to bottom, constantly scanning along this electron, it's uh, scanning this electron beam. And this, the reason that's white is because that's a phosphor coated, it's phosphor coated on the other side of that uh, glass. And the various connections, while scanning the um, electron beam, is, is firing the electron beam onto this phosphor. And uh, you, you might have seen various videos with LED clocks and stuff like that, and it's it's what we call persistence of vision. So the the picture is constantly being um, built up, if you like, scanning across, firing at the appropriate areas, at appropriate sort of strength, if that makes sense, to give you an image. So hopefully that kind of made sense. So the electron beam isn't firing all the time. Well, it, it is, but it's not on full power, if that makes sense. Um, and as it's scanning, like I say, it's firing onto this phosphor, illuminating it at certain uh, sort of strength, if you like, yeah, and builds up your image. And that this, is, like I say, this persistence of vision makes you see a, a static image. Uh, and that's why when we, we, we had this on at the start, we actually saw like a, a ripple effect uh, going up the screen. And that was just the camera picking up that raster scan um, as it was occurring. So, yeah. Um, quite high voltage uh, needed to to do this um yeah and that's basically sort of, um generated by this huge coil here um i don't know if we can see any details on it fu hong um doesn't say too much about it on there but uh, looking at the board um we've also got a uhf tuner here um for, for our analog video signal and um, we've got some you know loads of electrotic caps a couple of tuning caps uh, various um you know through hole components it is pr a fat, there's no surface mount on this at all i don't think maybe on the bottom there's a bodge now no it is entirely through hole um you know absolutely you know old school construction really uh, cheap as you like little adjustment knobs that you can just see those it's a sort of, sort of, uh, pressed paper and um, PCB for the um, the little potential as there um, connectors reasonable quality um, yeah not a lot else really to mention um, Looking at the other part of the board, uh, the other part of the unit, this is hot melt glued in, but we can see we've got a uh, variable, variable capacitor there uh, for our um, radio tuning and for AM, uh, we've got this antenna here. You can see the really fine windings around that. Uh, so, uh, um, God, I forgot what you call it. Like a ferrite core. Um, yeah, some little coils and not much else. Really, sort of. I don't know why they always put a little bits of foam through the coils. If anybody knows that, please put in the comments. But yeah, it's a bit um, looks a bit Heath Robinson, I think the uh, terminology is. And then on here, uh, this was for our um, VHF tuning. We've just got a little that's a hundred hundred k uh, pot on there, which obviously ties into um, you know a tuner circuit here. So that was a uh, yeah, there you go, two tuner, and that just obviously, uh, based on the resistance, can then able to adjust the frequency of the tuner. Uh, and then the, the various circuitry on here would uh, pump it through onto our um, little connector here and 
uh, basically build that image up on a on a picture. Um, the difference between um, a colour and a monochrome uh, cathode ray tube is basically the colour. One has uh, three electron beams um, and basically fire at three. The um, If you ever look at this, it's just purely a totally white phosphor. If you look at a colour CRT, it's normally made up of little cells of red, green and blue and clearly... Um, the electron beams fires at the certain colours as part of the scan, building up that colour image. And that's why, you know, um, the picture isn't as good quality because it, is, it has to be, uh, not crude, but, you know, the the, the little uh, sort of pixels, if you like, if you want to call them pixels, uh, are rather large on these just because the the electron beam is a bit more coarse in its operation when it, than obviously an LCD which has got really small pixels nowadays and you know really uh, super high resolutions especially when you're looking at 4K and Ultra HD and all that stuff I mean even 1080p is superb of course as you'll agree um, and it just doesn't compare to uh, you know or a colour CRT just cannot compare to it uh, in any shape or form so yeah that was a quick, uh, well I say quick, about 15 minute uh, tear down on that and uh, I don't know what to do with this I don't know whether to bin it or whether to maybe repurpose it and you know maybe do something like a little uh, Raspberry Pi, this is a really like, old school looking uh, computer based on a Raspberry Pi, might be quite interesting, I know there's quite a few emulators so yeah I might uh, chop this up and you know cut out the bits we don't need and get this uh, working a little Raspberry Pi in a nice little, nice little box that should there uh, should fit reasonably well, and quite a small form factor. Anyway, guys, uh, I know I was rambling on through that a bit, but hopefully you get a bit of understanding from it, um, how the CRT works and and such like. And uh, yeah, if you ever see these, yeah, sometimes good for a little project. Let's say this one was fifty pence. You can you can't even buy a coffee for that, so. Yeah, fantastic. Alright guys, take it easy and I'll see you again soon. Uh, obviously, like and subscribe if you desire. Cheers now, bye bye.